Play on. Give me exercise. The surface, the appetite is sickening. And so it's on. Strain again. It had a dying fall. It came over me like the sweet sound of the breeze upon a bed of violence, stealing and giving over. Enough! No more! Tis not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh thou art, that notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea, not enters there of what validity and pitch so air, but falls into a vapors and low price, so full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastic. Will you go on, my lord? What, Curia? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. In that moment was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like cool and fell hounds, ere since pursued me. <laughs> How now? What news of her? So please, my lord, if I not give you, but her handmaid do return the sense. The element itself, to set near his heat, shall not behold her face in equity. But like a potion, she will veil the walk and water her hammer once a day, as just seems what I have been right. All this is he's undead for this love, which you fresh and last him with your savvy remembrance. Oh, she that would pay has a heart of this fine frame to pay this debt of love even to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft have killed the flock of all affections else that live in her and filled her sweet perfections with one self king? Away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with flowers. What country, friend, is this? It is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned, but thank you, sailor. It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother! And so perchance may he be. True, madame, and to comfort you with chance, I assure yourself. After our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where, like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so, here's gold. Mine own escape unfolds to my hope, whereto thy speech serves for authority. Collect him. Knowst thou this country? I, madam, well, for I was born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as a name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino? I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For about a month ago I went from hence, and then to his fresh and murmur, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? Oh, a virtuous maid, the daughter of a count, who died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for his love they say, she hath endured the sight and company of men. That I served that lady, it might not be delivered unto the world, till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my state is. That were to compass, she'll admit no kind of suit, no, not the dukes. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain, and I will believe that thou hast a mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character. I am pretty, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise as Hadley shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke, thou shalt present me as a unit to him, maybe worth thy pains. For I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth of service. What else may I have to time I will commit? Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be with you in your wit, I'll be. When my tongue blabs, let my eyes see. Thank thee. Leave me on. What a plague it means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure cares an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier at night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepting. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? 
I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And were they not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who, Sir Andrew Aguji? Why, he. Why, he's as tall a man as any's in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? He has 3,000 ducats a year. I will have a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. By the chill say so. He plays over the vile the gamboys and speaks three or four languages word for word without book, and hath all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed all most natural. For besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. And but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling, tis not among the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. There are scoundrels and substractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking healths to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there's drink in Illyria and passage in my throat. He's a coward in a coistral that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn to the toe like a parish top. And Castellania will go what wench for here comes, Sir Andrew Agachee. <laughs> Sir Toby Belch, how now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress Acosta, I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary Acosta. You mistake, knight. Acosta is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not entertain her so in such company. Is that the meaning of Very well, gentlemen. And would thou let part so? Wouldst thou might never draw sword again? And you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you're a fool's a hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, for here is my hand. Oh, now, sir, God is free. I pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Well, I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But come, what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of Mary, I have them at my finger's ends. I let your hand go. I am barren. <laughs> oh, knight, thou lackest the cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? <laughs> Never in your life, I think, unless you see the canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. <laughs> but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm my way. <laughs> I'll hunt tomorrow, so Toby. Poor Claude, you're right. Or qua. Do or do not. I wouldn't have the time to just have been fencing, dancing, and uh... Oh, bear bait. <laughs> <sighs> oh, had I but followed the arts. Then wouldst thou have an excellent head of hair. <laughs> Would that have meant in my hair? Past question, for thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, dost it not? <laughs> excellent. It hangs like a flax on a distaff. And I long to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. I'll home to Nara, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by who is her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear to it. There's life in it, man. I'll... I'll stay a month long. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world, and I delight in masks and revels sometimes all together. Art thou good at these kickshaws this night? Uh, in the man Illyria, whatsoever he be, under the degree of my betters. And yet I'll not compare with an old man. Tell me, what is thy excellence in a galliard night? Uh, if I can cut a cable. And I can cut the mutton to it! And I think I have a back trick simply as strong as any man Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Is this a world to hide virtues in? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg it was formed under the star of a galliard. 
not just strong, and it does a different well in the flame-colored stock. The cup. Shall we set about some rebels? What shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that's science and all? No, sir. It is legs and thighs. Come, let me see the caper. Ha! Higher! Ha! Excellent! Excellent! I do believe you can stay with the war, Zeus. Sorry, you're likely in much advance. He's known you but three days, and already you're no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call into question the continuance of his love. Is he a constant servant in his favors? No, believe me. I thank you. Here comes the count. Uh, who's all Caesarian, huh? I'm your attendant, my lord. Here. Ah, Caesarian. Uh, stand you all while I'm sorry. Caesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped in me the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, address thy gate unto her. Uh, be not denied access, stand at her door. Tell them, there thy fixed foot should grow, till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she will never admit me. Uh, be clamorous and leap all civil bounds, rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Why? Then unfold to her the depth of my passion, surprise her with discourses of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to ask my woes. She will attend it better in a youth of thy age than in an unseenness of my great respect. <laughs> I think it not so, my lord. Oh, why, boy, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Why, Diana's wit is not more smooth than ruby's. Thy shrill pipe is as the maiden's organ, smooth and sound. And all is semblance of a woman's part. <laughs> uh, I know thy constellation is right out for this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll, I'll do my best to woo your lady. Powerful strife. Where I woo myself would be his wife.
got a wife for this that. Well, my brother's dead, good fool. I think his soul's in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more the fool to mourn for your brother's soul be in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not then? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that hath no more brain than a stone. But you now, he's out of his guard already. You do not laugh and minister occasion with him. He is gagged. I protest I take these wise men that crow some of these said kind of fools no better than the fool zanies. You are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. <laughs> to be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things for verbals that you deem candid bullets. There is no slander in an approved fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now Mercury do thee with music, for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the game a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young gentleman and well attended. Oh, who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off. I pray you, he speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Uh, go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home, or what you will, dismiss it. <laughs> now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old, and people dislike it. Thou spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool who skull Jove cram full of brains for Here he comes, one of thy kin has a most weak theater. And my honor half drunk, oh, what's he at the gate, cause? A gentleman! A gentleman? <laughs> what gentleman? There's a gentleman here! <laughs>
Good gentleman, give me much assurance of the mean lady of the house that I may proceed with this speech. Are you a comedian? I might profound hard, no. By the very fangs of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, but I am. Most certain. If you are, she do you serve yourself. What is yours to give is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. I come to what is important it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. <laughs> and tis poetical. It is the more like to be faint. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time of the moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good swabber, I'm to hold here a little longer. Some mollification for your giants, sweet lady. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver with the courtesy of it. So fearful, speak your office. The loan concerns your ears. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. But what are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me, I have learned from my opinions. What I am and what I would are as secret as made in head. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profit. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. And now, sir, what's your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said on it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my faith? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such one I was this present. It's not well done. Excellently done, <laughs> if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, to the door wind and weather. Tis beauty truly lent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. You will leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give up diverse schedules of my beauty. She'll be inventoried in every particle and utensil labeled as to my will. As <coughs> item, two lips, thin, different red. Item, two gray eyes with the lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. If you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Such love could be but recompensed that you were crowned on peril of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with thrones that thunder love the size of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth and in dimension and the shape of nature a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love him with my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? Or what would you? Make me a willow cabin in your days, and, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal panties of condemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hello your name to the reverberant hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I give you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me what takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. Your purse, lady, and no fee post. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart of one that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What 
What is your parentage? Above my fortune and my state as well, I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art thy tongues, thy limbs, thy face, action, spirit, to give thee the fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft. Soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this youth's perfection with an invisible and subtle self to creep in at my eye. Well, let it be. Oh, what home, Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or no? Tell him I'll none of this. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If the, the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi, thee, Malvolio. Yes, madam, I am <laughs> I do, I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. A fate, a show thy force, ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Stay no longer, will you not that I go with you? My ill patience, no. My star shines darkly over me. Mully didn't see if my fate might press his temper goes. Therefore, I pray for you your leave, which were a bad recompense of your love's way and upon you. Let me you know whither you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determined void is the mere extravagancy. But I perceive you so excellent a touch of modesty that you might spoke to me. You must know me then, Antonio. I'm Sebastian. My father was at Sebastian Wesley, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and his sister, both born in an hour, and if the heavens had been so pleased, would be so ended. But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the bridge of the sea was my sister's friend. Last the day. The lady, sir, though said she much resembled me, is of many kind of beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not have called fair. She is dry already, sir, the salt water. Though I seem to crown her remembrance again at the moment. Pardon me, sir, for that entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your troubles. If you will not murder me through my love, let me be your servant. If you will not do what you have done, as kill whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, but my manners are so near that of my mother, that upon the least occasion more in my eyes than that face of me. I am bound to the Count Rosina's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Rosino's court, else I would very shortly see thee there. But, come what may, do adore thee so. The danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Were you not even now at the Countess Olivia's? At a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. <laughs> She returns this ring to you. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance. She will none of him. She says you'd never be so hardy to come again to his affairs unless it be to report your lord's taking of his receiving son. She took the ring of me. I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it at her. Her will is it should be so. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. It could not be it is that finds it. She has no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside not have charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed so much. Sherman thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in stars distractedly. Loves me. Sure, her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. And on my lord's ring, why he sent her none? I am a man. <laughs> if it be so, as to his poor lady, she were better than a dream. Disguise, I see, though, arts of wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy it is for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. Such we made of, such we be. How will this fadge? My master.
master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am mad, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman now, alas, the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard not for me to untie. Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be in bed after midnight is to be up betimes. And to whom closer share thou knowest, nay, by my troth, I know not, but I know to be up late is to be up late. A false king of this I hate it as an unfilled can. No. Were we to be up after midnight, and to go to bed then is early, so that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Big so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou <laughs> <laughs> art to the right, therefore let us eat and drink. Marion, a stoop of wine, I say. Here comes the fool of faith. Ha, my hearts. Did you never see the picture of me? Welcome, ass. Now, let's have a catch. Yeah, yes, uh, by my trough, the fool has an excellent breast. So that was a very gracious fooling last night. I sent these six pence without an and asked him. I did it in Pentecost thy fertility. For Malvolio's nose is no whip stock. My lady has a white hand, and the Myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. Uh, very good. Come, uh, most excellent. Uh, let's begin. Let's have a catch. Let's have a song. Come on. There's, uh, sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Hi, there's a test rule of me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a love song or a song of good luck? A love song! A love song. I, I, I care not for a good life. <laughs> <coughs> oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? You'll stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in a lover's meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Most excellent, very good. Good, good. What is love, tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff will not endure. The most listless voice as I have turned <laughs> Her contagious breath, not a very sweet and contagious faith. To hear by the nose, it is dulcet and contagious. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls of one weaver? Shall we do that? You love me, let's do it. I'm a dog at a catch. My lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. <laughs> most certain. Let our catch be. Thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. This is not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. It begins, well, it begins. Hold thy peace. Hold thy peace? Why? I shall never forget if I hold my peace. <laughs> Very good. Come begin. Hold, hold, hold thy peace. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, 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 thou name. <laughs> hold, hold, hold thy peace, hold thy peace, thou name. What a caramel do you keep here? If my lady have not called out her steward, Malvolio, and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a penny. We are politicians, Malvolio's a pegaranzi. Three merry men be we. Am I not consanguine? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley Lady, there dwelt a man Babylon Lady. Let him be sure we the nice and excellent fooling. Uh, he does well enough to be disposed to. 
And so do I, too. <laughs> he does it with a better grace, but I do it more naturally. Oh, the twelfth day of For the, the love of God, peace! My masters, are you mad? <laughs> or what are you? Have you no wit, madness, nor honesty, but the gavel like takers at this time of night? Do ye make an alehouse of my lady's house, that ye squeak out of your cozier's taxes without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Have you no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir! In our catches, snack up! Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are very welcome to the house. If not, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. <laughs> but I shall never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. Shall I bid him go? What and if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. Out of tune, sir, you lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? That's by St. Anne, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. <laughs> thou art a scholar. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. Mary, a stoop of wine. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor in anything more than contempt, you would not give leave <laughs> for this uncivil rule. She shall know it by this hand. Oh, go shake your ears! <laughs> Go, knight, write him a challenge, or I shall deliver his indignation by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the council was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. As for Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not call him into my neighbor or make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us, tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of Puritan. <coughs> if I thought that, I would beat him like a dog. <laughs> For being a Puritan, thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason, but I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time piece. An affectioned ass that can't stick with that book and utters it by great swords. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all who look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure. Your epistles of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent, excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> <laughs> he shall think, by the letters thou wilt write, that they come from my niece, and that she is in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse would make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. Sport Royal, I warrant you! I know my physic will work with him. I will plan to you too, but the fool make a third. Where he shall find the letter, observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Good Fair night. Night. Good night, Ventisilea. For me, she's a good wench. She 
She is a beagle true bred, and one that adores me too. What of that? I was adored once too. Come, let's to bed. Thou hast me sent for more money. So I cannot recover your niece. I am foul. Send for money, knight. If you have thou hast her not to the end, call me cut. And I do not never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, come, let's go burn some sack. Tis far too late to go to bed now. Come! Shall we have some music now? Good morrow, friends. Ah, now, Cesario, what that piece of song, that old and antique song we had last night? We thought it did relieve my passions much, more than the light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy pieces of times. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please your lordship fetch it singing. Oh. Who was it? Hephaestus the jester, my lord. A fool the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He's about to pass. Seek him out, and uh, play the tune the while. Now, come here, boy. If ever thou should love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are. Unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of that creature that is beloved. How does thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou to speak, Master. My life locked, young though thou art, thine eye has stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is this? Of uh, your reflection. She is not worthy, then. What years of age? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder to herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, for thy affection cannot hold the men's. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed, the fall that very hour. Alas, that they are so, to die when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come, come, that song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. And dallies with the innocence of love, like to the old days. Are you ready, sir? Ah, oh, pretty sing. Come away, come away, death, and in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain, my fair cool maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a flower. That coffin, let there be strewn. Not a friend, not a friend, greet. My poor corpse, where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand sighs to save, lady. Now the melancholy god of the tech, 
the Taylor make thy doublet of most changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very noble. I should have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business be everything, and their intent everywhere. For that's it that always makes a good voyage of nothing. <laughs> 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 okay. Cesare, come, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed on her, tell her, tell her, I hold as giddily as fortune. Oh, but tis that same miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks in her, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Sweet, but you must say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Lydia. You cannot love her, you tell her so, must she not be then answered? There is no woman, sides, can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, but mine is always hungry as the sea and doth consume as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. And faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment like a worm in the bud to feed on her damask cheek. She pined and thought with a green and yellow melancholy, sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my lord? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too. Yet I know not. <clears throat> Sir, shall I to this lady? Oh, I, to her in haste, tell her. My love can bid no delay, make no stay. I give her this truth. Come thy way, Signor Fabian. Nay, I will come. If I have the disapproval of this court, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly, rascally sheep fighter come by some notable shame? Brought me out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. To anger him we'll have the bear again, and we shall fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not use the pity of our lives. Nay, but here comes the villain. How now, my mental Lydia? Get ye all three into the box tree. Now, Folio's come down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun practicing behavior to his own shadows. <laughs> now, uh, observe him for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. <laughs> oh, say the name of Justine. Lie thou there, for here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Maria once told me my lady did affect me, and that if she should fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else who follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. He just under his advanced plumes. I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. Be count. Malvolio. Ah, rogue! Peace! Peace! There is example for it. The lady of the Stratchy married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fire him, Jezebel. <laughs> 
Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! <laughs> And then to have the humor of state, and after demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I were they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Boots and shackles! Oh, peace, peace, peace! Now! Seven of my people make out for him. Perchance I frown the while, wind up my watch, or play with my some rich jewel. Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? Though her silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand thus, and quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take you a pearl of the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Oh, scare! Violence, or we break the sinews of our plot! Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. <laughs> <laughs> One Sir Andrew. See, I knew what to say for me, you do call me fool. <laughs> Him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her C's, her U's, and her T's, and thus makes her great P's. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's? By the, what? The unknown beloved, this and my good wishes her very phrases. And wax soft the impression of her breach which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. Who should this be? This wins him liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know the numbers altered, no man must know. If this should be thee, not holy. Very hang thee, Brock. I may command or I adore. But silence like a Lucretian knife, with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore, M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A Fusian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first let me see. Let me see. Let me see. What dish of poison has she dressed him? And with what wing the spaniel checks at it? I may command where I adore. Why she may command me, that is evident to any formal capacity. She is my lady. But what of that alphabetical position for hand? I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. Softly. M-O-A-I. Mawai. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh, I make up that he is now at a cold scent. Satter will cry upon it for all that. Uh, uh, M, 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 Malvolio, M, why that begins my name! Did I not say you would figure it out? <laughs> ah, but there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. O shall end, I hope. Ah, you're all cudgel him and make him cry, O. And I comes behind. Aye, if I knew any eyes behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. <laughs> M-O-A-I, the simulation is not as the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. Soft! Here follows prose. This fall into thy hand revolve. <laughs> I 
In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fate open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman. <laughs> Surly with servants, let thy tongue hang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee, then sighs with thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. And wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember, go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. Farewell. She that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will read politic authors. I will battle Sir Toby. <laughs> I, I would be proud, stout in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. I am happy. Here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. <laughs> thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I pity. <laughs>
how quickly the wrong side may be turned out. Nay, that's certain. They have down next to the words, they quickly make them wanton. I would, therefore, my sister had no name, sir. Why, then? Why, her name's a word, sir, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. But, indeed, words are very rascal since bonds disgrace them. By reason, man. Wrong, sir, I can yield you none without words, and words are grown so false, I am loath to prove reason with them. Who art thou to marry, fellow, and carest for nothing? Not so, sir. I do care for something. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, I will make you invisible. Art not that Lady Olivia's No, sir, the Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep him a fool, sir, till she be married, and husbands are like fools, as filters are to herrings, the husband is the bigger. <laughs> she will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. I am not indeed her fool, but rather her corrupted fool. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw thee late at Count Orsino's? Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun, and it shines everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Pray, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. 
the clock upbraids me with the waste of time. I fear not, good youth, I will not have you. Though when wit and youth are come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho, grace and good and sufficient and tender, ladyship. You'll not think, madam, to my lord by me. Stay, I pity. Tell me what thou thinks of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I do think so, I think the same of you. Then you are right, I am not what I am. Would you <laughs> rather <laughs> have you be? Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, with deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that maugre all thy pride, nor with your reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this cause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause. But reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none shall, mistress thee have it, say by alone. And so would you, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. And yet come again, for perhaps thou mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. No faith, I'll not stay a trap longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reasons, Randrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she did to me. I saw it! In the orchard! Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. It's plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Slightly will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noble was a sailor. She did show faith to the youth in your sight. To exasperate you, to awake your dormant valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her, and with some excellent jests by our new mint, you should have banged the youth into dummies. This was looked for at your hand, and this was bought. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and now you are sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you shall hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. Unless you redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or palsy. <laughs> and, <laughs> and to be any way, it must be with valor for policy I hate. I had as lief be a brownist as a politician. Go, then write your fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to a duel. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it and assure thyself. There is no love broker in the world can more prevail in commendation with woman than report of valor. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go! Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Haunt him with the license of him. If thou dowest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. Therefore, let there be enough ink in thy pen, though thou write with the goose pen, no matter about it. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee in the cubiculo. Go! <laughs> this is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, some two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it? Never trust me then, for Andrew, if you were open and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. In his opposite, the youth in his opposite, the youth bears in his visage no grave reason to cruelty. Here comes my youngest Ren. If you desire the spleen and will laugh yourself in the stitches, follow me. Yon goal now Bolio is turned heathen. A very renegado for there is no Christian that needs to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He's in yellow stockings! <laughs> oh. And cross guard. Most villainous, like a pig that keeps a school in the church. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter I dropped to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map of the 
the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen <laughs> such a thing as tit. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. If she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. I would not by my will trouble you, but since you make pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I cannot stay behind you. My desire more sharp than filed steel that's spread forth. And I will love to see you, though so much as would have drawn one to a longer voyage. But jealousy will not fully your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriendly, often proved rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather for these arguments of fear, did send me forth in your pursuit. My kind and some of you I can no other answer make, but thanks and thanks, and off good terms I met with such uncurrent pay. Where my worth is, is my countenance firm. You should find that idea. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Uh, tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, just long tonight. First let us satisfy our eyes on the memorials and things of fame that do renown this city. Uh, would you pardon me, sir? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the Count of his galleys, I did some service of such note that if I were to hand here, it would scarce be answered. Like, you slew a great number of his people. The offense were not of such a bloody nature. I'll bet the quality of the time and the quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took, which, for traffic's sake, much our city did. We myself stood out. You're not, you're not, you're not it doth not suit me. Here, sir, hold my purse. In the southern suburbs of the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet while you beguile your time and feed your knowledge with you in the town. Why are your purse? <laughs> Happily, your eyes shall light upon some trinket which you have desired to purchase. Your stores, I think, are not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your first man and leave you for now. To the elephant. I do remember. I have sent for him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? Or what bestow of him? For youth is more often bought than borrowed or begged. I speak too loud. Oh, where is my Olio? For he is sad and civil and too well for a servant of my fortunes. Oh, where is my Olio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? Does he grave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. <laughs> Your ladyship, we must have some guard about you if he come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Call me hither. I am as mad as he, if sad as merry madness equally. Uh, how now, my <laughs> <laughs> Sweet lady, ho, ho. Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this. Cross goddering. <laughs> what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true son it is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, no yellow in my legs. I did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt <laughs> thou go to bed, Malvolio? Bed. Ay, sweetheart, now come to thee! God comfort thee! Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, Nightingale answered Oz. Why appear you in this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, was well written. Oh, what meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great, some achieve greatness, what that? and some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? <laughs> wish to see me ever cross Carter. Cross Carter? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. I made? If not, let me see thee, a steward still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. <laughs> I could hardly treat you back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Oh, where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my
my people have a special care of him. I do not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, oh, did you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Ah, cast thy humble slough, says she. <laughs> Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue hang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity, and consequently sets down the manner how. I have limed her! <laughs> but it is Jove's doing, and Jove make me thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow. Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. <laughs> Why, everything adheres together, that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple. No obstacle, no unsafe or incredulous circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Jove is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he, in the name of sanctity, if all the devils of hell be drawn in little, and Legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him? Here he is, here he is. How sweet you, sir? How's with you, man? Go off. Let me enjoy my private. Go off. I discard you. Lo, oh, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you, Sir Toby, my lady, prays you have a care of him. I will do so. We must deal with him gently. Let me alone. How now, Malvolio? How is't with you, man? What? Defy the devil! Consider he's an enemy to mankind! Do you know what you say? Why, you, when you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart, pray God he is not bewitched! Take his water to the wise woman and Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. Ah, does she now? Go to, go to, peace. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. Seemed as rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how now, my bacaw? How is it with you, Chuck? Sir! I biddy, come with me. Tis not for gravity to play its cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier! Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers? Me! No, I warn you, he will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. <laughs> you shall hear more hereafter. <laughs> Is it possible? If this were played upon a sage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Why? <laughs> These very genius have taken the infection of the device. Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take your attention. <coughs> We shall make him mad indeed. The house will be quieter. Come, we will have him in a dark room and found. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance, till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy upon him. At which point we'll bring it to the bar and crown thee for a finder of a madman. But see, but see. Ah, oh, more matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is so saucy? Aye, yes, do but read. Give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. <laughs> One would not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note. This from the blow of the law. Thou camest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat, that is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and to exceeding good sense. Less. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Good! Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep on the windy side. 
side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy on mine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself, thy friend as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguchi. If this letter be written not as likes you not, I'll give it to him. You may have verification for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, and will find by the part. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me forward at the orchard like a bum bailey. And if thou seest him, draw. And as thou draw, swear horrible, for it oft comes to pass that a terrible oath with a swaggering accent doth give man more more ever a motivation than proof itself ever would. Nay, let me alone for swearing. <laughs> Now will not I deliver this letter, for the gentleman doth give himself to be of good capacity in breeding, and this letter being so excellently ignorant will stir no terror in the youth. Therefore, I shall set upon and achieve a notable report of valor, and deliver the challenge by word of mouth. I will deliver the youth into the most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so scare them both that they will kill each other by the look like cockatrices. Ah, uh, here he comes with your niece. Give them wait till he take leave, and then presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message. I have said too much into a heart of stone, and laid mine honor to uncherry out. There is something in me that reproves my fault. Such a head straight fault that is good but mocks reproof. Same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. And I pray thee, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny that honor safe may upon asking give? Only this, your true love for my master. How may I give him that with my honor that I have given you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Really well, be my theme, I will bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir? What wrongdoings thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the orchard end, attends thee at the orchard end. Therefore dismount thy tongue, be in thy preparation, for thy ascendant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You do mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any offense to me. My remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offense done to any man. You will find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake thee to your guard. For your opponent hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and fury can furnish men withal. Are you, sir? What is he? He is knight, dealt with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three. And his incensement is at this moment so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death. Hobnob his word, give or taint. I will return again unto the house and desire some conscience of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men who purposely quarrel in others to taste their valor. The likeness is a man of that quirk. Sir, no, his indignation drives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, give him his desire he must. Back you shall not to the house. You must meddle, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office, as to know the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabi, steady by the gentleman till my return. I pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the night is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrage. But nothing of the matter. I pray you, what matter of man is he? He is most fatal, bloody, and skillful knight you could possibly have found with any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. White <laughs> man, he's a very devil. I had a pass with him, rapier scabbard and all, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. He pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. Pax on the tongue of that woman. He shall not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. 
<laughs> but that's his leg on him, and I thought he'd been so cutting and valiant in fence, I'd have seen him damn dear I'll have challenged him. Let him the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse great cattle it. I'll make the motion. Stand here the while, and make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. He has persuaded the youth the devil. He is as horribly conceited of him, and dances and looks pale as if, a, as if a bear were at his heels. <laughs> There's no remedy for it, sir. He will have one fight with you for his honor's sake. But the matter is scarce to be worth talking of. He had better bethought him of his quarrel. Therefore, draw for the supports of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would tell, make me tell them how much I lack of a man. He is grand if you speak him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy for it. He will, for his own sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the dwell avoid it, but he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, to it! Thank <laughs> God he keep his oath. He's against my will, I can assure you. <laughs> Put up your sword! <laughs> 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 Let's take his fault on me. If you offend him, I for him to fight you. You, sir, why? What are you? One, sir, that for his love there's yet to more than you have heard and swear to you he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, then I am for you. <laughs> well, then, Sir Charlie, hold, here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. <laughs> 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 Uh, and there you lie, sir, and for that I'll be as good as my word. He'll bear you easily and reigns well. This is the man, do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the student council. No shot. I know thy favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. You know that open well. I'm also bad. This comes with seeking you, but there is no remedy. I shall answer it. What can I do? My necessity makes you ask me for my coin purse. It grieves me far more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. What money, sir? The fair kindness you showed me here, and part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my mean and low ability, I'll, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. Hold, there's half my hopper. Must you deny me now? Is it possible my deserts can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to abrade those kindnesses that I've done for you. I know of none, nor know I do by voice or any feature. I hate you right to be more to man than vainness, lying, babbling, drunkenness, or any team device that inhabits our frail blood. Oh, heavens themselves. Comes there, I pray, you must go. Let me speak a little. This youth you see before you, I have to snatch one half out of the jaws of death. Relieved with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which we thought would prove most venerable, worth did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by. Away. But how vile and idle proves this God! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good features, shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind, none can be called the form but the unkind. Virtues of beauty, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks, so are flourished by the devil! The man grows mad. Away with him. Come, come, sir. Leave me on. His words do from such passion fly that. He believes himself, so do not I. Prove true imagination, I'll prove true that I, dear brother, now be taken for you. Come hither, knight, come hither, Fabian. Let us whisper or a couple of most sage saws. You named Sebastian. I, my brother, know, yet living in my glass, even such and so in favor was my brother. Color ornament in this fashion, for him I imitate. Oh, if it proved true, tempests are kind and salt leaves fresh in love. A very dishonest poultry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His cowardship is shown in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. And for his cowardship, ask Fabian. A coward? Uh, no, it's not a coward. Religious edge. Uh, Slit, I'll go beat him. Do, come and sound the guns. I'll go beat him. Never draw thy sword, and I do not. Come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money, it will be nothing yet. Will you make me believe that I have not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou a foolish fellow, let me be clear of thee. Well held out in faith. No, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is. 
Prithee, put thy folly somewhere else. How knowest thou me? Then my folly? He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Then my folly? <laughs> I prithee, ungird thy strangeness and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish drink, depart from me. There is money for thee. You tarry longer, I shall give words to him. These wise men give fools money to get themselves a good report. After fourteen years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again? Fares with thee! Oh, fares with thee! And there, and there! Come, sir! Fool man! Hold, or I'll throw your dagger over the house! This I will tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pets. <laughs> Come, sir, hold! Nay, Toby, let him alone. I'll have an edge of the battery against if there be any law in Illyria, though I struck him first. It's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. I'll be free from thee. What wouldst thou now, if thou dare send me further to the office? Nay, then I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! Sir Topaz! Oh, 
exquisite Sir Topaz. Hey, I am for all waters. <laughs> no, mine is not about that right now. He sees me not. But to him in thine own voice, and deliver me word how, how thou findest him. I were we will well, well rid of this knavery, for I am now so far in offense with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come, by and by, to my chamber. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady comes. Fool! My lady is unkind, purdy. Fool! Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves another. Who calls? Ha! Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio. I, good fool. Tell us, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Sir, mm, good fool. Never was man thus abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? <laughs> then you were mad at me if you be no better in your wits than a fool. Nay, here, <laughs> property me, keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me, asses. And do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise what you say, the minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain nibble babble. Sir Topaz? Mary, sir, keep no words with him. Who? I, sir? I, I sir, God by you, Sir Topaz. <laughs> Mary, amen! I will, sir. I will. Fool? Fool? I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. Good fool. Help me to candle and pen, ink and paper, and set down what I will convey to my lady. It shall advantage thee more ever than the bearing letter did. I will do it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch thee light, paper, and ink. Pretty, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. I pray thee, get thee further. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you. In a trice, like to the old boss, your need to sustain, who with dagger of laugh, in his rage and his wrath, cries, ha ha ha! The devil, like a mad lad, pay my nails down! Ha ha! you, good mad devil. Having been sworn to truth, ever will be true. 
Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. <laughs> Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give dog and in recompense desire my dog again. Mm -hmm. I belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends. I wear some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir. Better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary. The better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, so they praise me and make an ass of me. Now, my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that by my foes I may profit in knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives. Why then, the worse for my friends, the better for my foes. Well, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Oh, thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. You can make it a double dealing, sir, and we can make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. I will so much be a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. <laughs> Primo secundo tertio is a good play, <laughs> sir. The old saying is, the third pays for all. <laughs> the tribute, sir, is a good tripping measure, or the bells of St. Anne, sir, keep you in mind. One, two, three. Thou can fool no more money out of me than this throw. If you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her, and bring her along with you, it may await my bounty further. Very sir, love by your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you to think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you say, let your bounty take him down. I will awake it to none. <laughs> here comes the man, sir, that you rescue me. Oh, his face I know well. Yet, when I saw it last, it was besmeared, as black as Vulcan in the fog of war. A bobbling vessel as he, Captain of, with shallow draughts and bulk unprizable, with which such scathful grapple he did make with the very noble bottom of our fleet, the very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Porcino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her frog from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the street, desperate of shame and state, in private rabble did we apprehend him. No to a pipe, thou saltwater thief! He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion took strange speech upon me, I know not twas but distraction. What foolish boldness hast thou wrought that brought thee to thine mercies, whom thou in turn so bloody, so dear, hast made thine enemies? Porcino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names that you give me. Tony was never yet a thief or pirate, though I confess, in the facing ground and not Porcino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me thither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas and rage and foamy mouth that I redeemed. Direct past forth he was. I gave him his life and did thereto add my love, not retention or restraint, all his and devotion. For his sake did I expose myself to the danger of this adverse town. You to defend him when he was beset, all his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, did face me out of his acquaintance and grew a twenty years removed. Thing while well one would wink, denied me mine own purse, which I had entrusted to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, sir, and three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Ah! I hear the Lady Olivia. Oh, now how heaven walks on earth! But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me. But more of that anon. Take him away. What would my lord, but that he may not have, where the Olivia might seem serviceable? Gracious Olivia! Cesario, you cannot keep promise with me. Madam? Madam? But could my lord, what say you? My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, Lord, it is as fat and wholesome to my ear as howling after music. Still so cruel! This is a constant, Lord. What? To perverseness, you uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offerings hath breathed out that e'er devotion tender. What shall I do? Even what it please, my Lord, that shall become him. 
shall I then, had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at the point of death, kill what I love? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this, since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom, by heaven, I swear I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me, my thoughts are ripe with mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to slight a raven's heart within a dove. And I most joke and act and villainy to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more than all the wars and I now shall love wife. If I do fain thou witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. I me detested? How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the holy father. Come, away. Whither, my lord, Cesario, a husband, stay. A husband? Ay, husband, can he not deny? Her husband, so wrong. No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the basis of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Be not afraid, Cesario, take thy fortunes up, be that thou knowest thou art, and then art thou as great as that thou fearest. Welcome, Father, Father, I charge thee on thy reverence to unfold here what hath newly passed between this youth and me. Contract of eternal bond of love, street, confirmed by the mutual joining of your hands, attested by the holy cloths of lips, strengthened by the interchange of your rings, in all the ceremony of this compact. Sealed my function by my testimony, since when my watch have told me, towards my grave I have traveled but two hours. Oh, thou dissembling cub! What wilt thou be when time of soda grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy crack so quickly grow that thine own trick shall be thy overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I don't I not swear a whole little thing. For the love of God, a surgeon! Oh, send one presently to Sir Toby. Oh, what's the matter? He has broke my head across and he has given Sir Toby a bloody costume. For the love of God, your help, I had rather than forty pound I work at home. Oh, who hath done this to thee, Sir Andrew? Count serving and one Cesario, who we took to be the who we took to be a coward, he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario! My play thinks there he is! <laughs> you brought my head across for nothing for that that I did, I was sent to do it by Sir Toby! Bloody coxcomb be heard that you have hurt me, though I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Oh. Here comes Sir Toby hauntingly. How now, gentlemen? How's it with you? This old one has hurt me! Sod, sod, did see Dick Surgeon, sod? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour ago, and his eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue! And a passing measure's favorite, I hate a drunken rogue! Away with him! I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help me? An ass head, and a name, and a girl, a thin faced man! Get him to bed, and let his hurt be looked to. I'm sorry, madam, I've hurt your kinsman, but had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less than to witness that. If you're straight to go to me, by that I did perceive it had offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, but for the vows we made each other that's what they One voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective, it is and is not. Antonio? Oh, my dear Antonio, how many hours have you racked and tortured me since I lost him? Sebastian, are you? Here's thou that? How have you made division of yourself? An apple <laughs> left in twain could not be more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Too. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. 
spirit of I am indeed, but in that dimension grossly clad in the womb which I did participate. My little woman, as the breast goes, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, John Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola was in the birth of number thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. My father hath indeed ended his mortal life on the day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing lets to make us happy both but this my masculine absurd attire, do not embrace me to each circumstance of time, place, and fortune. Do go here and jump that I am Viola. <laughs> Which, to confirm, I'll bring you to a sea captain in this town, where lie my maid's garments. If by his gentle help was I preserved to serve this noble count, all my fortune and sense hath occurred between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. You would have been contracted to a maid, nor are you now there and by my life to see. You are betrothed both a maid and a man. <laughs> <laughs> For right noble is his blood, and if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I may yet have shared this most happy wreck. For <laughs> thou hast said a thousand times thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings hold as true in soul as doth that over fire that severs day from night. Then give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's womb. <laughs> the captain that first brought me on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endured to the suit of Malvolio, a gentleman and follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. A bit Malvolio hither. <laughs> Yet, alas, now I remember me. Poor gentleman, they say he's much distract. The most distracting frenzy of my own, for my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, Sarah? Oh. Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub about the staves end as well as a man in his case may do. Has here writ a letter to you? I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madman's gospels are no epistles, so it skills not so much in the world. Oh, then read it. Then to be well edified in the full of the madman. By the Lord, madam! <laughs> <laughs> no, madam, I do but read madness, and your ladyship should have it as it ought to be. Must allow box. I could be agreed if I write wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to be thus. Therefore, prepend, my princess, and give ear. I could be read it to you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> By the Lord, madam, you wronged me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet I have the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right, or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of, and speak out of my injury. To madly use Malvolio. Did he write this? I know. This savior is not much of a distraction. See him deliver, baby, and fetch him hither. These things further thought on, so please your lord, to think me as well a sister as a wife. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done to me, so far beneath your soft, tender breeding, so much against the metal of your sex, and for you called me master for so long, you shall, from this time be, your master's mistress. But pray, where is Malvolio? Oh, is this the madman, then? This the same. Uh, how now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Uh, have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you. Lose this letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand, or phrase, or say tis not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. And tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear light of favor, bade me come smiling and cross-guarded to you, to put on yellow stockings, 
to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people? And why in acting in an obedient hope you have suffered me to be in prison, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest and made the most notorious geck and gull that e'er invention played upon? Tell me why. Alas, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but tis the out of question Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink thee, t'was she first told me thou wast mad, then came in smiling, and in such forms as was presupposed upon me in the letter. Take comfort. This, this hath passed most shrewdly upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own case. Good madam, hear me speak. And let no quarrel nor no thrall to come take the condition of this present hour, which I have wandered at. In hopes that it shall not, most freely I confess myself in Toby, said this device against Malvolio here. Upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof she ha he hath married her. So, with some sportful malice, it followed. May rather pluck on laughter and revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Poor fool, how they have baffled thee! What? Some have born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them! <laughs> <laughs> 